It's Ken Harbaugh with Against All Enemies on the Midas Touch Network. I'm about to share with you a statement from former President Trump. It's a list of the things he intends to do immediately upon returning to office. I heard someone say recently that the main difference between Donald Trump's first term and a potential second is that this time he has a plan and he has assembled around him a cast of loyal foot soldiers who will stop at nothing to implement it. This speech is not a pledge to the country, it's a threat. You'll see what I mean. And to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption once and for all, and corruption it is. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats and I will wield that power very aggressively. Second, we will clean out all of the corrupt actors in our national security and intelligence apparatus, and there are plenty of them. The departments and agencies that have been weaponized will be completely overhauled so that faceless bureaucrats will never again be able to target and persecute conservatives, Christians, or the left's political enemies, which they're doing now at a level that nobody can believe even possible. Third, we will totally reform FISA courts, which are so corrupt that the judges seemingly do not care when they are lied to in warrant applications. So many judges have seen so many applications that they know were wrong, or at least they must have known. They do nothing about it. They're lied to. Fourth, to expose the hoaxes and abuses of power that have been tearing our country apart. We will establish a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to declassify and publish all documents on deep state spying, censorship, and corruption. And there are plenty of them. Fifth, we will launch a major crackdown on government leakers who collude with the fake news to deliberately weave false narratives and to subvert our government and our democracy. When possible, we will press criminal charges. Sixth, we will make every inspector general's office independent and physically separated from the departments they oversee so they do not become the protectors of the deep state. Seventh, I will ask Congress to establish an independent auditing system to continually monitor our intelligence agencies to ensure they are not spying on our citizens or running disinformation campaigns against the American people or that they are not spying on someone's campaign like they spied on my campaign. We don't even have to listen that closely to appreciate the authoritarian impulses of Donald Trump. He and his allies are now saying the quiet parts out loud. He said he would terminate the Constitution if he could. And his enablers at places like the Heritage Foundation have issued comprehensive guidebooks like Project 2025, for how to dismantle our democratic safeguards. The people closest to Trump talk openly about invoking the Insurrection Act to limit Americans' ability to protest. We don't need deep journalistic exposés to identify these dangers, although investigative journalism still plays a vital role in defending democracy. What we need are people brave enough to tell the truth loudly about the threats posed by a second Trump administration. Tristan Snell is one of those people. He successfully prosecuted Donald Trump for fraud in the Trump University case and is a keen observer of how Trump manipulates his followers. My full interview with Tristan is on Burn the Boats, where we talk about that case against Trump and the inability of today's Republicans to stand up to his lies. But I pulled this part out because it speaks directly to the threat that Donald Trump poses to our democracy. Here's Tristan Snell, former Assistant Attorney General of New York. Donald Trump just released a statement outlining the top list of things he would do as a reelected president, and it is chilling stuff. It's not just gutting the federal bureaucracy and shifting jobs out of D.C., it's going after journalists. It's basically abolishing warrants. It is truly putting us on the road to fascism. And I would love yeah. your thoughts on how to raise the alarm, 
how to leverage what you learned in successfully taking down Trump in this one instance and mobilize and motivate the American people to stand in the way of this? You know, I think he's the, the, the silver lining out of all of this is I think it's going to serve as its own wake up call. Uh, you know, he is again saying the quiet part out loud and he has a, he has a habit of doing this. Um, it's a strength for him because it allows him to, he is very much the example for his base of like, you know, he says what I'm thinking. And, you know, that's something the MAGA people say a lot about him. And so he is saying it out loud, but he's so obvious about it that it's also, it's not a dog whistle. He's not talking about, you know, uh, they, before in, in before he would talk about draining the swamp, whatever that meant, and that it, it actually what it meant is I want to be the king of the swamp, and I will rule over it in an even more correct way than other people have. Uh, but whatever. Now he's actually just delineating things that are very obviously undemocratic and un-American. Now, thankfully, I do think it will serve as its own alarm. But we need to take it seriously. We can't just look at it and say. Uh, we need to take him literally and seriously, you know, and before it was like, you know, I think a lot of the conventional wisdom, especially sort of inside the beltway or, or, or mainstream media thinking went, oh, Trump doesn't really mean these things. And I know I just said a few minutes ago that Trump doesn't, I don't actually think Trump means a lot of the, uh, a lot of the crap that comes out of his mouth, but that doesn't mean he won't act on it. And by the way, the people he surrounds himself with do not have that sense of theater necessarily. They do take him literally. If you put people like Stephen Miller in charge of big chunks of the government, you will see people get detained without charges and without trial and in violation of habeas corpus rights. You will see detention camps set up. You will see political prosecutions. You'll see media prosecutions. Um, I do think you'll see those things. Uh, I don't think, I think we need to take it literally and if we do, I think that's the big thing. And if we do, I do think that there's a solid majority of Americans who are ready to stand up and say enough is enough. This is going, this has gone way too far. It never should have gotten to this point in the first place. But I think it's going to make this choice much more stark. And whatever people feel about Joe Biden or whatever people think about his age or about, you know, the Middle East or whatever, it's going to come down to a very stark choice between the republic and democratic uh, and 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 democratic processes and the rule of law as we know it versus autocracy and fascism and uh, and totalitarianism and a, and a man who if he gets in again may not leave and i'm not joking i don't think it's crazy to say like he could actually then say great i hereby nominate my son don junior to be the next president of the united states and there may be something resembling a plebiscite there were there were still elections after 1933 34 in germany but they were they were very much rigged and people were cowed into submission and if people had the temerity to think that they were going to run against the nazi party they were rounded up and arrested there still may be elections there are elections in putin's russia there may still be an election but it'll be a rubber stamp that will that will just confirm what has already been decided by the you know by the by the regime uh it's. I don't think that th these things are that far fetched. I think people have been in a bit of denial that were that Trump is actually going to be the nominee. Uh, I think that people have been sort of hoping that somehow he would go away. I think that the realization and and people have better things to do with their time. Most people, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, you're probably a political junkie, and God bless you, and I am too, and you are too, and you know. And so worth paying attention to all this. Most people aren't because they've got better things to do with their time, you know. Um, and they're probably way more concerned about the football games this coming weekend than they are about the political stuff right now. But everybody's going to, at one point or another, wake up to what's happening here. And I do have a certain amount of bedrock faith that most Americans are not going to go along with this. Maybe I'm crazy and maybe I'm going to end up in one of these detention camps. But, like, that's where I stand. Hi, everyone. I want to give a big shout out to all those who have signed up to support this show through my Patreon page. We are off to a fantastic start. 
Thank you for making it possible. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider it. In the coming months, I'll be posting early and exclusive content, including a trailer for the Against All Enemies documentary film, which has been racking up awards at film festivals around the world and will soon be released here in the U.S. Stand by for more details on that. And if you're a subscriber to my Patreon page, be on the lookout for an early preview. Thanks again, everyone. I, I stand with you on that. And uh, I want to I plug the book, Taking Down Trump, one of the most encouraging through lines, uh, besides the fact that you successfully prosecuted and held the Trump organization and Donald Trump himself accountable, is the fact that many of his victims woke up. They yeah, realized they the danger to themselves, to their families. For some of them, they suffered a lot to get there. But I think that's instructive for our our current moment as well. We've got a cult expert coming on the show soon, Dr. David Hassan, who talks about the, the possibility of recovering people even from the, the deepest connections they may have to a cult. Yeah. And you, you talk to hundreds of people who invested everything in Donald Trump and yep. were able to detach themselves. Yeah, I think that I think it is really critical. Uh, and by the way, they had come to that realization on their own. It wasn't because I, you know, somehow deprogrammed them. When I picked up the phone to call them, they were already there. They just needed to tell me what they were feeling and what they were thinking and how they had arrived at that. And I did ask them. I asked them, when did you realize it? And for them, you know, it was a little bit more clear cut. Because these promises had been made to them. And at a certain point, it was like, okay, did you actually deliver on these promises to teach me how to invest in real estate or did you not? And so the, that, that it's unfortunately not a perfect apples to apples because there was sort of a moment of truth where you were either going to deliver on those deliverables or you were not. And ultimately, Trump University very much did not. Uh, Donald Trump has not yet quite had that moment in a lot of ways. I mean, he's had a lot of them, but he's been able to keep dragging people along being like, well, this time I'll build the wall. This time I'll do infrastructure. This time I'll clean up the deep state. You know, I got uh, stopped last time. This time I'm not going to let myself get stopped. He's got an excuse for everything that he didn't accomplish in his first term that he now somehow will accomplish in his second term. It seems like his second term is, yeah, is premised on the idea of day one, I'm going to get rid of all of my opposition and then just watch the wonderful things that I will accomplish. Uh, yeah, that's a dictator. That, that's fascism in a nutshell. It's basically like all everything else gets suppressed. All of the enemies of the state get pushed off somewhere off to the corner. We have unity and then watch the wonderful things I will do. I will make the trains run on time. I will bring the jobs back. I will do this. I will do that. Um I alone can fix it. Uh, we've yet to get to a point where people get to see that the deliverable is never coming. Uh, I hope that we get there someday with some of these people. I do think that something that's coming, I will make one little thought here, is that I think some of the trials that are coming, even though people aren't going to see like, oh, he didn't deliver on his promises or whatever he was pro promising. I think that the starkness of seeing somebody like a Mark Meadows or a Mike Pence stand up on a witness stand, uh, well, stand up and then sit down, you know, whatever. They're getting sworn in, they're sitting in the witness box, and they're there talking about how Donald Trump was conspiring, leading a conspiracy to remain in office and, and over, overturn the election in violation of the Constitution uh, and multiple federal laws. I do think that there's going to be a certain number of people that are going to say, and poll numbers bear this out, that they're going to be like, that's it, I'm off the bus. And it doesn't have to be everybody. It just has to be enough of a percentage to keep an electoral college win out of reach for Trump. That's what we have to hope for here, is that it just dampens his support just enough that it will make this election potentially a lot less close than we otherwise fear it could be. We'll have to see. I, I hope you're right, because either way, he's going to contest uh, a loss you talked about the premise of yeah. a second term being vengeance i think there's an underlying premise of his campaign which is staying out of jail uh, 
Tristan, thank you yes, so that's much. Very much it. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much for serving the country for for writing this book. Uh, we'd love to keep talking. Thanks, Ken. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.